we know he's not perfect. Cody, you had your hand up first. He committed adultery. That's right. And then he tried to cover it up, right? And what did he do to try to cover it up? Aaron? They sent him in the front of the army little... He didn't send... Who did, who did he send in the front of the army? You, you got the right... You did that, but who, who did he do that to? Do you know? Who? Who did he do it to? David sent a certain man to the front of the army so that he would get killed. Who did he do that to? No, it wasn't David. David did it. Who did he do it to, Chloe? You don't need to know his name, but who was he? Okay. No, it wasn't Saul. He never lifted up his hand against God's anointed man, Saul. Maddie, what did he do? Who was it? Yeah, it was the woman he committed adultery his husband. He had to get him out of the picture. So that was awful. And God said, God came to David and told him that he knew that. And David wept and cried. He was sorry for his sin. And he asked God to forgive him. And did God forgive him? Yes. Yes, he did. But even when we've sinned, and we've been forgiven, sometimes we still have to take our punishment, don't we? And what were some of the things that happened to David we learned about last week? Some things that happened to David and his family, that's punishment for David. These are some of our pictures from last week. Who? His brother. Not his brother. David's? What about his, David's son what? He died. He died. Who, how did David's son die? He was killed by how did, how did David's, how did David's son die? Do you remember? I don't think you were able to be here last week. Chloe? Who killed him? Who killed him? David didn't kill him. No. Stephen? The Philistines. Not the Philistines. You weren't here. You might know. Uh, Cody. Another son. Yeah. This man's brother killed him. Why did this guy kill this guy? Aaron? Because him thought him with a lady and With his sister. That was awful. So... David's son raped David's daughter. Then the girl that he raped, her brother, killed his brother, his half-brother. Then he ran off up a long way away, and then he came back. And when he came back to Jerusalem, what did he do? He started a rebellion against his dad. And he gathered men, he gathered an army to fight against David, against his own dad. And when those armies fought, what happened? What happened when the army of Absalom fought against the army of David? Stephen, do you remember? Yes, he died. Who died? Um, uh, the people in, in the, in the kingdom. Some of the soldiers died. Aaron, who died? Him. Him. Yeah. Yes. Absalom. And was David happy about that? No. Yeah. No. Even though Absalom was coming after him to kill him, it broke David's heart when his own son was killed. <laughs> now after a while, David was able to come back to the, to the palace, and he was king over Israel again. He was king over all of the people. And the Bible tells us that David got an idea in his head. And he called his general Joab and he said, Joab, I want you to go to every single little town, every town, big town, medium-sized town, every little village, and I want you to count 
and take a register and take down a list of the names of everybody in the whole kingdom. Especially, get a list of all the people that could be soldiers in our army. And Joab, his general, said, King David, why do you need to do that? Why do you want to do that? God is powerful enough. He doesn't, we don't need lots of people in an army if we have God with us. But David said, just do it. He was getting prideful. He thought, I want to know how big and strong my kingdom is. So Joab obeyed the king, and he and his men went from town to town, and they wrote down the names, and they counted the number of how many people were in all the king, all the all the kingdom of David. And when he came back to report to David, David thought, why did I do that? That was sinful. I got filled with pride. And I shouldn't have done that. And he felt bad and he confessed again his sin to God. You think God forgave him? God did forgive him. But God sent a prophet to David and said, David, God has forgiven you, but you have to be punished again. But God is going to let you pick your punishment. Now listen to what David's choice was. God said, you can either pick seven years of famine. Do you know what a famine is? No. A famine is when there's not much food and people get hungry and people <laughs> even die because they don't have food to eat. And the animals don't have food to eat. And there's no water. Seven years of famine. Or you can be chased and beaten by your enemies for three months. So you know who the enemies are. Enemy soldiers would come in and they would, the armies of Israel would go to fight. And they would not have boldness or courage. And they would run and they would get beaten by their enemies. Lucas had that choice. Either famine for seven years. Three months of running before your enemies, or three days of a pestilence. Now, do you know what a pestilence is? No. Now, we kind of, we think we know what a pestilence is. A pestilence is when a, when a very powerful disease comes into the country and runs all throughout it and spreads from person to person and kills hundreds and thousands of them. Now, kind of... You know, the news has told us that we've had a disease running through our country, right? Yep. For the last year. Yeah. Now, it has it was nothing like this. I mean, not, we hardly know anybody that's really gotten terribly, terribly yeah. sick. Now, people have. But, God said, you could have, I can send a pestilence for three days. And David said, I, will have, I would rather have God judge me because I know that God is merciful. And we do know that, don't we? <clears throat> Enemies, they might not be merciful. A famine, whoo! But God is merciful. And so, the pestilence started into the people. People started getting sick and dying. Hundreds of people. Throughout the land, in three days, 70,000 people died from the pestilence that came through. That is hundreds of times more than what we have experienced in America. It's way, way more. Much more terrible. An actual pestilence. And toward the end of that, God came to David and said, David, I want you to make a sacrifice to me, and I want you to go and buy a hill. I want you to buy this hill from a king, from Aruna. It was right not far from where David lived. And so David went. He had the leaders of the people with me, listen up here, he had the leaders of the people with him, and he went up to see Aruna, and Aruna came out to see him, and Aruna said, what do you need, David, what do you want? Everybody knew there was awful terribleness going through, and David said, the Lord's told me to buy this mountaintop from you, and to sacrifice to him, so that the pestilence will be finished, stopped in the land. And Aruna said, oh, if the Lord wants you to do that, you can have it. You don't need to pay me money, and I'll give you animals, and I'll give you work, wood to sacrifice the animals. You, can, you don't need anything. And David said, no, 
I can't sacrifice to God something that didn't cost me anything. And so David paid a lot of money to Aruna so that he could buy the hill and the oxen and the wood, and he sacrificed to God on that hill. And when he did that sacrifice, the pestilence, the disease that was running through all the people, stopped. Now, not long after that, or even before that time, David had wanted, remember when David wanted to build a building for the Ark of the Covenant to be in? So, and, and what did God say? God said, no, you can't build a building for me. Do you remember what God said to David? Eliza? I'm going to have your son build it. That's right. Now, after this time, we find out God told David after he made that sacrifice, that the hill that he had bought was the place where he wanted to have his temple built. And so David started gathering tons and tons of wood and cedar and stones and gold and silver. He gathered all kinds of stuff. Was he, able, was he allowed to build the temple? No. But he didn't get a pouty attitude. He didn't get a bad attitude. He didn't say, well, if I can't build it, nobody can build it. Have we ever said something like that? Somebody said, we wanted to do something, and our parents said no, and they said, well, if I can't do it, they can't do it either. We have done that, haven't we? David didn't have a sour attitude. He still loved the Lord. He was a man after God's own heart, and so he gathered everything he could so that his son Solomon would be able to build God's temple. David, throughout his life, he wrote songs. He was a songwriter. Does anybody know where we can find lots and lots and lots of the songs that David wrote? They're in the Bible. There's a whole book called Psalms, and those are songs that David wrote. And toward the end of his life, one of the songs David wrote he talked about how God was his rock and his fortress. Now, he wasn't talking about a pebble that we find in the driveway. He was talking about a rock, a, a mountain of a rock. And a mountain of a rock can't be moved, can it? We can put our trust in somebody, and they, we might say, oh, I can depend on them. They, and then what happens? They fail. They don't do what we really want them to do, what we're expecting from them, and they fail us. But God will not be that way. God will not be moved. He's like a huge rock, and he's like a fortress. What is a fortress? If we're inside of a fortress, we are being defended. We are safe, right? So God, even though we can't see him, even though he isn't walls, God can protect us, can't he? And that's what David was saying. I can always depend on God. God will protect me from whatever it is that, he wants that, that is a danger to me. David was always, even right after he had done things that were wrong, he was always sensitive. He was always careful of what God wanted from him. When he realized that he, had done, that he had gotten into what we would say is flesh and done his own thing, he turned back to God and begged for forgiveness, and God forgave him. And you know, hundreds of years later, God honored David. You see this little part of our picture here right in the top? Can you tell what that is? I can tell what that is. You know what that is? Right there on the top. The boys over there said a baby. It is. It's baby Jesus. It's not really baby Jesus. It's just a picture. But we remember that when Jesus came, he was born in a um, stable and laid in a manger, right? And this reminds us of that. You know what they called Jesus many times while he lived on the earth? They called him the son of David. Jesus was one of David's descendants. God honored David by letting Jesus, his own son, be born 
into David's family. God did that because David was a man after his own heart. David loved God. And David, even though there were times when he made mistakes, and some of them really big mistakes, David always loved God, and David always trusted God. Sometimes he got to do what he wanted to do, and God blessed him. Sometimes he wanted to do something, and God said no. But David still trusted God and obeyed him. We want to remember that. We should always do what God wants. Sometimes it will be something that we want to do. And sometimes we'll want to do something, and then we realize that the Bible doesn't want us to do that. And we should trust God, right? And do what He says. And if we do that, we can have a blessed life like David had. So, we're going to remember those things about David. And the biggest thing I want us to remember is that we should live like David, not when he was making his big mistakes, but throughout most of his life. Through the times when God said that he was a man after his own heart, Julia, David was a man that trusted God. And we should trust God. And trusting to us today means whatever the Bible says, I'm going to do it. Doesn't matter if I understand why it says it, or doesn't matter if I'm afraid that if I do it, something might happen to me. If I'm afraid that something might happen to me, I can remember that God is my rock and my fortress. And God will protect me so long as I'm doing what He wants me to do. Right? So we should trust God and do what He says.